amazing God. May the thoughts that you have put on my heart be the words that lead you to me. To persevere is defined by Miriam Webster as a continued effort to do or achieve something despite difficulties, failure, or opposition. So a baby may cry persistently until someone understands what the baby is crying about and how to satisfy their condition, which will relieve their cry. And a child might persistently question some action. Why does this happen? Or when will we get there? And a, until an adult provides an answer to that child's question. The stove is hot, don't touch it. Or we'll get there before long, and if you don't stop asking, we'll turn around and you go home. These examples of persistence are really communications issues. The baby cries to get the adult's attention. And the adult responds by determining why the baby is crying and then takes the steps necessary to relieve that problem. And a child's curiosity drives them to ask questions or take risky actions. The adult's response is to provide answers to those questions before the curiosity gets out of hand so that the child is not seriously hurt. Stubbornness is a synonym for persistence. Webster defines stubborn as having or showing dogged determination not to change one's attitude or position on something, especially despite good arguments or reasons to change. In our family, the Jackson men are considered to be some stubborn by some because we often refuse to give up on an idea or process, even when the results we get are not what we expect. So a person is considered stubborn when they insist on doing things a specific way, even when the results are not good. Another synonym for persistence is diligence which Webster designs as a steady, earnest, and energetic effort, devoted and painstaking work and application to accomplish an undertaking. Diligence in communications is that steady, earnest, and energetic exchange of ideas. It's a better approach than either persistent speech or stubborn attitude. It is a continued effort to achieve a better response. So communicating with God is an act of prayer. The line of communications we call prayer came about because God wanted to have a direct connection with his people. And Jesus is our example of how we are to communicate with God. He offered constant diligent prayers to his Heavenly Father, often, perhaps several times a day. Now the Gospel writers record Jesus praying 38 times in the New Testament. Luke includes four different occasions when Jesus has prayed publicly. I believe Jesus prayed much more often than just 38 times. He probably prayed the first thing when he got up in the morning, before and during, before every meal, and before turning in each night. Jesus' prayer life was a steadfast effort to include his Heavenly Father in every aspect of his earthly mission. How did prayer come about? Much of the Old Testament is about God's efforts to connect with his seemingly stubborn people. 
who seem to be unable to grasp this concept of one God. Interestingly, the word stubborn is found 34 times in the Old Testament and 10 times in Jeremiah. In Jeremiah 5.23 we read, but this people has a stubborn and rebellious heart. They have turned aside and gone away. The reason they have lost contact with God is because they stubbornly refused to live by the covenant that God gave Moses after freeing them from slavery in Egypt. In our reading this morning, God is offering the Jewish exiles in Babylon a new covenant. At this point in the narrative, Jerusalem and the temple have been destroyed. The Jews are in exile in Babylon with no way of connecting to their God. The Lord promises to write the law on the hearts of the people so that each and every one of them will be responsible for keeping the law and connecting with him. I will put my law within them. I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Jeremiah 31 and 33, B. We talked about um, life returning to normal last week. Jeremiah is urging them, the exiles, to build homes and start families and have children and have the children marry and start homes and build new lives there while they are in exile. This new covenant is another part of what will become normal life for the Jews. Though the temple and the law of Moses are gone, the Lord will write his law on each of their hearts so that it may be carried on to the next generation and continued to provide a connection with each individual to their Lord. As we turn to the New Testament, Jesus is, telling, is encouraging his disciples to use this communication link with the Lord that came about with the institution of the New Covenant. He encourages them, there, them to pray always and to not be discouraged when it seems that their prayers have not been answered. In the parable of the unjust judge and the persistent widow, Jesus can, ex, provides an example of persistent prayer and how God res, will respond with a just answer. Now the unjust judge stubbornly refuses to fear God or respect people. Yet he grants the persistent widow's request, not because she makes a good case or has evidence that she should that would support her case, but just to get her out of his hair. We don't know anything about the widow except that she's persistent. But Jesus promises his disciples that God will respond to persistent prayer with a just answer, not to get the prayer out of his hair, but to offer them a just solution for their persistent request. After assuring the disciples of God's faithfulness in answering prayer, Jesus asks a question that puts the shoe on the other foot. God is faithful, but what about you? God's grace and forgiveness is what enables the avenue of communications that is a two-way street between God and us. The disciples must wait faithfully for a response because of that two-way street. First ask, and then faithfully wait 
were God's reply. God's faithfulness towards them calls forth their faithfulness in a gracious and just God. So prayer must be persistent, and it must be diligent and steadfast after the example of Jesus in the New Testament. There is no other God who offers two-way communication with humanity. God is always available, 24-7, 365, and every minute and second of every hour. He always responds, and with faithful listening while praying, we can dis discern that faithful response. God waits faithfully for us to be in dialogue with him. Anytime, anywhere, and for any purpose. Jesus showed us how to pray and encourages us to wait faithfully for God's answer. So there are no there is no such thing as unanswered prayer. But there are stubborn prayers who do not listen diligently for God's response to their requests. All these things come about because God has opened that avenue that allows us to um, request and listen for responses to our human needs here on earth. And we need to take advantage of that two-way street and be in constant communication with our Lord. Amen.